We now have the mother of all Trump-Russia conspiracies to discuss. This is uh, Jonathan Chait of New York Magazine. Apparently you say his name Chait. It's this guy here. By the way, dude, finasteride. Get on it. Finasteride, buddy. I take it. No shame in that. No shame in my game. Um, his name is Chait, not Chait. I always called him Chait. I like Chait better because it's like, it sounds douchey and he's douchey. Um, so John Chait went on Chris Hayes' show to um, explain this goofy-ass conspiracy. And I want you to pay close attention. And, a matter of fact, go ahead. Pull up Microsoft Word, or if you got a sheet of paper next to you, just fucking grab a pencil or pen and, and just jot down. Look at the evidence that he's able to share to back up his genius theory. Take a look. Did the Trump campaign, did the candidate at the heart of it, conspire with Russia to subvert American democracy? Or, and, does Russia have some kind of leverage over Donald Trump? In a new cover story from New York Magazine, writer Jonathan Chait argues, we have not allowed ourselves to consider the full range of possibilities. Chait lays out what could be considered the worst case scenario for Trump-Russia collusion, that Donald Trump has been a Russian intelligence asset since 1987. New York Magazine's Jonathan Chait joins me now. So, okay, it sounds insane. I just want to say, it really does. Like, the idea that he went, he goes to Moscow in 87 and is cultivated as a Russian intelligence asset and is this sort of, like, sleeper cell for decades sounds nuts. It sounds it like the stuff of conspiracy theories. Why are you not insane? So, that's a great question, Chris. <laughs> I get that all the time. Uh, so, for, so, first of all, the piece acknowledges that that is probably not true, but it might be. And one of the reasons I wrote this is you need to take seriously some of these low probability, high impact scenarios. You know, before the election, sort of everyone heard that Hillary Clinton had about an 80 percent chance of winning. And we all just treated it like that meant 100 percent and didn't think about what would that 20 percent alternative really mean. So that's part of what I'm doing with this, with with aspects of this piece, like this trip to Moscow. You know, what would it mean if it was, if it really went that deep? Now, there's a lot of ways in which this scandal could be really bad and not go that deep. But I think you need to consider that for another reason, which is that everyone always says, well, this has been Trump's view forever. All this stuff he's saying about the Western allies splitting us apart from the West and, and how, he's, how he's sort of pissing on them all the time and, and saying, you know, we should let them go their own way. That's just what he's always thought. It's not really what he's always thought. It's what he's thought since 1987. He never thought that before then, or at least he never said it before then. And in 1987 is when he, he went to Moscow and he's feted by the Russians and, and tours Moscow. And then he comes back. Then he starts talking about running for president for the first time. And then he starts talking for the first time about how our allies are a bunch of freeloaders and we should kick him to the curb. Yeah, and we should say that he is, I mean, I just want to be clear here. He is really consistent on that point, right? The, the idea that this sort of zero-sum view that our yeah. allies are free riding and we're paying for it. He takes out full page ads at $100,000. He sounds identical to how he does now, right? The idea that like we're getting abused, we're getting taken for granted, and we're paying for other people's defense. We're paying for other people's defense who we're defending against the Russians. Right, at that and, point and particularly, yes. So it really dovetails with Russian foreign policy interests then and now. Now, again, that's probably a coincidence, yeah. but it might, it might not be. I mean, I think... You know, you have to take seriously the possibility that it's not a coincidence. And, you know, I, I try to assemble all the information that I think can be brought to bear on this question. Like I quote John Brennan, the, who was the CIA, CIA director as recently as 2016, who, who said that he thinks the Russians have something over on Donald Trump. And, and the weird thing is that thinking like the CIA director, hey, maybe he knows what he's talking about. That's the kook theory, as we understand it. Like, the kooks are the ones who are saying, we should listen to the guy who's running the CIA. Usually, the kooks are saying the CIA is part of the conspiracy. Right. And now it's, it's, it's we well, kooks who say, let's listen. Well, I want, I want to follow up on that. But first, you, there's, yeah. there's one piece in here that I, I completely forgotten about. So I want to play Brennan's testimony in May 2017 yeah. that you cite in the piece just to give people a flavor of what, how he talks about it. Take a listen. I've studied uh, Russian uh, intelligence activities over the years and have seen it, um, again, manifest in many different of our counterintelligence cases and, and how they have been able to get people, including inside of CIA, to become treasonous. Uh, and frequently, individuals who go along that treasonous path do not even realize they're along that path until it gets to be a bit too late. And you also have a reminder in the piece of that fact that he got briefed 
in what was it August or the in August 2016, the head of British intelligence flies to the U.S. This is reported by Jamir to brief him personally on what was going on between the Trump campaign and Russia. Yeah, and, and the Guardian had another report about another Western European, or I think maybe a, a Eastern European intelligence agency briefing him about the same thing. They were listening to intercepts of Russian officials talking about the Trump campaign and the connections they had between them. So we don't know what those intercepts said, but but clearly he, something you know alarmed him, set him off, and, and and made him reach these dire conclusions. Here, you know, you have this metaphor of the cave, right? That we we keep thinking that the bottom is just right around the corner, maybe we're at the mouth of it, right? And I've I've had this to it. It's a vertigo-inducing thought. I never know quite where to orient ourselves, and we just know the facts as they kind of come to light. You kind of assemble them. You come up with a mental theory. My question to you is, are you confident we will know the final truth, right? That, like, ultimately the thing will be revealed about what is true and what's not, what the facts of the matter are. I think some of the facts we'll find out. I think the things pertaining to the end of the Trump campaign will probably find out because a lot of people are flipping and cooperating with Mueller. But if, if there's leverage in Moscow, my guess is that's going to stay in Moscow. I don't see how Mueller's right. going to get at secrets that are locked to the Kremlin. Where do I begin with this, Jim? Okay, so first of all, let me say up front because I can already hear the, the echoes of straw manning of me happening on the Internet. Um, is Donald Trump corrupt? Yes. Um, does he have business deals with unsavory actors and unsavory actors from other countries and around the globe? Yes. You know, I've spoken about it before. He has a, a piece of property, a hotel, I think, in Panama where they were laundering drug money. So is Donald Trump involved in some shady shit? Yes. There's evidence he's done deals with the mafia. You know, I mean, really, you're going to... You're going to be a builder in New York City in the 1980s and you don't have mob ties? Bullshit. We know, as a matter of fact, his lawyer, when he was younger, uh, I don't think to this day because I think the guy may have passed away, but his lawyer when he was younger is the same lawyer that was used by the top mob families in New York. So, yes, he, the dude certainly has mob ties. I don't think that's controversial to say. I don't think it's controversial to say that he's done deals with oligarchs, including Russian oligarchs. I don't think that's controversial. How many times have I gone off on the fact that he has, um, his products are made in 12 different countries. So he has sweetheart deals with different governments. Saudi Arabia gave him hundreds of thousands of dollars when they stayed at his hotel recently, in a recent trip. And in return, look at what they got. Oh, wow, shocker, you just got like a hundred billion dollar weapons deal. Israel, same thing. Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, has taken a tremendous amount of money from Israeli banks, millions and millions of dollars. And then, wow, shocker, uh, we end up doing the bidding of Israel and, and moving the embassy to Jerusalem. And we, they literally tried to prevent, when they were president, when he was president-elect, they tried to prevent the UN from condemning Israel over illegal settlements. This is when Israel contacted Trump's campaign and said, okay, listen, this is what we want. Um, you have Flynn, Paul, uh, Paul Manafort and, um, and Flynn, Michael Flynn. Flynn was doing the bidding of the Turkish government. He was taking money. He didn't register as a foreign agent, but he was taking money from the Turkish government, and he was lobbying to um, not arm the Kurds in Washington. So he was doing the bidding of a foreign government without even registering as an agent of that foreign government, and he got nabbed. And, you know, Paul Manafort, yes, absolutely a criminal. I'm sure he was engaged in money laundering. He's in fucking prison right now. So is there... Are they a criminal family? Yes, I'm not saying they're not. Are they engaged in corruption? Yes, I'm not saying they're not. So I just want to be so clear about that that nobody could try to straw man, straw man me and say, like, my argument is they didn't do anything wrong. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is this version of events is hilariously stupid and a parody of itself. And I'll explain why. I just described how they're deeply corrupt and they're doing the bidding of other governments and their money laundering and they're involved with oligarchs and all that stuff, 100%. The idea that it goes all the way from Donald Trump to Vladimir Putin and he's doing Putin's bidding, well, that's provably not true. Now, why do I say that? Well, for one thing, Putin, one of Putin's top allies is Assad in Syria. We bombed him and, his, and the people on his side three times, four times, we're permanently occupying Syria right now. Trump announced that, like, 
about a month or so ago. And by the way, nobody even was talking about it, but they were like, yeah, we're going to do a permanent, we're going to keep our uh, troops in Syria. What? So is that what, is that what uh, Putin wants? The United States to permanently occupy his fucking ally who he's got business dealings with? No. Donald Trump approved arms to go to Ukrainian rebels. Many of those Ukrainian rebels have fucking neo-Nazi ties. Uh, and why would he send money to uh, Ukraine when Ukraine is fighting Russia over the Crimea situation? You don't arm the side that's fighting Russia if you're doing Vladimir Putin's bidding. That would never happen. He sanctioned them. I know people like to, you know, harp on uh, certain sanctions Trump not approving, but he has increased sanctions since he's been in office. That's a fact. And then another interesting piece of evidence that just came out, by the way, Donald Trump, like all yesterday, was ripping Germany on Twitter. Why? Because we are we fund much of NATO. And at the same time that we're funding NATO, Germany is getting a tremendous amount of oil from Russia. So Trump's point is, well, hold on now, let me see. We are paying for defense from Russia as you motherfuckers have business dealings with Russia. And so he was lambasting them and saying, oh, you're Russia's puppet. Now, people were like, oh, see, he's trying to do the, he's doing projection because he is obviously Putin's puppet. No, you jackass. He's bought by the oil companies in the U.S. He's bought by, I mean, he's taken a tremendous amount of money from ExxonMobil and all these uh, different fossil fuel companies. And the reason why he's ripping Germany for taking oil from Russia, for having business deals with Russia, is because that's him saying, do the business deal with us. Enrich the oil companies that gave me money when I ran for president. So he's trying to blow up a business deal that involves Russia because he wants the U.S. Uh, he wants U.S. companies, or they're really multinational, but he wants ExxonMobil and fossil fuel companies here to get that deal. So the idea that like, oh no, he's just doing projection. No, he's obviously trying to blow up the business dealings. He thinks it's stupid that we pay for defense from Russia as they have business deals with Russia. We need to defend you from your fucking business partner? So, it just all the empirical evidence shows that even though he's corrupt, even though I'm sure he's involved in money laundering and the mafia and all types of dirty shit and he's doing the biddings of all these different governments, he hasn't done the bidding of Russia. That's just a fact. Okay, now... Let's dig deeper here, because his, arg his argument, it wasn't even an argument, it was a lack of an argument. He was like, he starts by saying, we all thought Hillary would win. Okay, and? How is that relevant to the conversation? Then he says, um, oh, well, he went to Moscow. So what? He went to, he went to Russia at some point in his life? I'm sure Trump has been to at least 30 countries in his life. I'm sure of it. Uh, and then he said... Is my favorite piece of non-evidence. Well, you know, Trump, he's, he's always kind of said that, uh, I guess he's been critical of NATO, I guess, for a long time. Uh, Chait argues he's only done that for, uh, he's only been saying that for 30 years. He's only been famous for 30 years. How the fuck would you know what he was saying before that? He wasn't even in the public eye. Uh, what, a, what a ridiculous argument to make. Uh, then he says, well, you know, the CIA has concerns. And they cite Brennan as... Uh, for backing them up. That's the dude who crafted the drone program that's been murdering women and children all over this world. And now all of a sudden, this guy who the left used to go after viciously, now all the time, oh, he's some sort of objective moral arbiter. That's just nonsense. Uh, and then, finally, he finishes by saying, we'll never know. You know, that, oh, how fucking convenient. The, Rania Kalik made a great point on Twitter. She said, this is now birtherism for Democrats. That's what this is. It's like, it's all, the arguments are all non-arguments. It's all innuendo. It's all assumptions. It's all leaps of logic. We'll never know, he finished it. Well, if you'll never know, what the fuck are you talking about it for? What are you talking about it for? This thing, and they even, Chris Hayes is like, this sounds insane, but let me give you airtime for you to go ahead and try to explain yourself. And even on the banner, they were like, unlikely. On the banner, you're going to say unlikely, but maybe. Do you have any idea how many bullshit theories you could throw out there with that disclaimer? Unlikely, but maybe. Unlikely, but maybe the moon landing was fake. Unlikely, but maybe the moon is made of fucking cheese. Unlikely, but maybe uh, Barack Obama's a Kenyan Muslim. You, ah, uh, oh God, there's...
it's be, they've become so disingenuous, man. So insanely disingenuous. And so let me say this. If to this point I haven't convinced you, fine. I do want to show you the big gotcha moment, though, of, you know, what this theory is, what this conspiracy theory entails. You want to see the um, very simple, not at all convoluted, and not at all stupid flow chart that uh, Chait released here to explain his conspiracy? Take a look. I, this isn't a joke. I, I, didn't, I didn't make that. Chait made this. As if to be like, anyway, let me show you how, uh, how this theory would work if indeed it was real. We're at Glenn Beck levels of crazy. That's what that is. That's Glenn Beck level crazy. You, with the giant chalkboard, this is Glenn Beck 2000, circa 2010 nonsense. Giant chalkboard, draw the lines, oh my god, Van Jones is a communist. That's what this is. That's what this has become. And it's fucking embarrassing. And listen, man. It's the more I see shit like this, the more I fear that Donald Trump can get reelected. He has a decent chance of getting reelected because if this is viewed as the predominant, you know, the predominant narrative on the left, if this is what we got, then that's like, you know, running on birtherism against Obama. And what happened was in the midterms in 2010, you had giant pickups from Republicans. OK, so maybe 2018 Democrats get major pickups. But what happens in 2020? Well, what happened in 2012? Barack Obama got reelected, didn't he? Can Trump get reelected? <laughs> Keep saying stupid shit like this and find out.